Goals are everything. Having goals, having plans, having milestones, having your eyes on a target that you're working toward each day, that shit is so important. But being able to be flexible and pivot, and if some shit goes down in life, you got to be able to respond. What's going on? You're listening to episode 96 of the Perspective Podcast, and I am your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is all about carving out time to build something for yourself, and I want to share what is and isn't working for me, along with sharing my guest point of view. Also, at the end of each episode, I plug a weekly dose of inspiration of someone crushing it in the community, so stick around because it could be you. Ooh, we are so close. So episode 100 is going to drop on October 31st. And I'm a Halloween junkie. I love Halloween. I, some reason I always have. If another fun fact about me is that I love horror movies. Super weird. I don't know why. Uh, but don't judge me for that. And whether you're a Halloween fan or not, because I know some people aren't for whatever their reasons are. And I respect that. I have a special treat for you with no tricks. You know, I got something brewing on the side. I'm dropping a whole slew of merch, hand-thrown mugs done by my friends at Deneen Pottery in Minnesota. I have screen-printed posters and t-shirts with support from Industry Print Shop in Austin, Texas. And I also got enamel pins coming your way from uh, my buddy Josh at Grizzly Wheeler. I, I'm so excited. I, I'm going all out. I'm trying to make this special. And I plan on hosting a giveaway that day as well. Uh, so everything will be dropping October 31st that day and all the proceeds, any sales if, in your support is going right back into the podcast. Just so you know that I'm not going out and spending it all on Bitcoin or buying a new laptop or anything. Everything is going right back into the show so I can upgrade equipment, make it better and, and provide you more value in the long run. I want to ask you a, a little favor from you. Okay. Try something different. I'm going to give you a task. And you can participate or not. It's up to you. I'm not butthurt if you don't. But I'm going to task you with the project of creating some tribute episode 100 artwork. Simply, all I ask is for you to include perspective podcast any way you want. And episode 100 somewhere tucked away in there. The rest is totally up to you. Go wild. You could do a Halloween theme, cat theme, pizza theme, outer space theme. You can make stuff out of food. You can do whatever the hell you want. I just want to see you get creative and experimental. And when you post it, make sure you use Perspective Podcast 100. Use that as the hashtag and tag me at Perspective Podcast because I'm going to be sharing all of them. Any of them that are, are created, I'm going to go through that hashtag. I'm going to find them all and I'm going to share them on the podcast page and to help build up hype and, and generate some excitement as we lead up to this, this event. I want to make an event out of this and I want to be sure to show you love back. So let's move on to today's episode topic. So today and next week are going to be a bit shorter and I'll explain why here shortly. And uh, the following two weeks after that, we're jumping back on the interviews. I got some killer ones lined up. Uh, one's going to be with Michael Fugoso, aka Fug Strader on Instagram. He is a freaking beast with the illustrations. And next, I got one of my favorite lettering artists, Kyle Letender of K. Hey Kyle. You know, look these people up right now, get familiar with them. They drop a shit ton of value on their episodes. But the reasons why today and next week are a little bit shorter because it's easier to manage. I'm, I'm busting my ass building this episode 100. But these have also been topics that have been weighing on my mind a lot recently, and I've been slowly wrapping more context around them and paralleling them to, you know, this creative grind that you and me are on, you know, this, this, our paths, our creative careers, what we wake up each day and pour our time into. And I think you're going to get a lot of value in this because the show is about perspective, hence perspective podcast. It's not just about perspective and drawings. Everything in life is about perspective. And I'm hoping today's topic and even next way allows you to see life each day through a different lens and how you wake up each day and approach your life, how you talk to yourself and, you know, how you bounce back from adversity. So I think you'll enjoy today as it's all about rolling with the punches. So let's lace up those boxing gloves and step into the ring. You can find the show notes of this episode 
at perspective-collective.com slash 96. And you can follow along on Instagram at Perspective Podcast or Perspective underscore Collective. Just kill the vowels as I'm always sharing the process behind each episode artwork on my stories. And I'm always available there for you to ask me questions. So if you got questions, hit me up. I'll do my best to answer them in a timely fashion. Let's go. Like I said, rolling with the punches. This has pretty much been my wife and I's motto of 2018, and and I'll tell you why. Understand that it's good to have a plan. I'm a very strategic, schedule-driven, task-driven person. I love to have a plan, but you got to be able to respond when things don't go as expected, you know, when your plan goes off course. I talk about it all the time, the shit in the sunshine, that life is not all about sunshine and rainbows. We, we understand that and, and you need to understand that and you have to expect some darkness and tornadoes to throw your life off track and being flexible and understanding adversities coming your way, those low moments in life, you know, those are, those are the punches that I'm talking about. You're going to get knocked on your ass. Imagine Ali, Tyson and McGregor just coming at you at once. That's, that's what I mean about rolling with the punches, just taking life. It, when things come and hit you, just roll with it. And this is why it's our motto. So as you know, little Scotty the third was just born August 27th, but we found out that we were going to be pregnant. It was on Christmas day. I remember uh, we, we woke up early. We went over to my parents' house. We always have my parents Christmas first, her parents Christmas later. So we did the whole gift thing. Then we come home and then me and her have our own little Christmas thing, have stockings for each other and stockings for the cats. <laughs> yeah, we love our cats. We we give them treats. We kept it pretty light this year. Not really any crazy gifts and stuff. Money was tight, but we always go all out with the stockings just with like little fun, random things. And we got done doing the stockings and got the cats to open theirs and we're just sitting there, you know, just chatting. And finally she drops it on me. She just says, hey, Scotty, I- I'm pregnant. You know, and earlier that morning, she was being sneaky saying she had to go get a gift for her parents last minute at Walgreens. But really, she went and got a a pregnancy test and and she thought I was going to be mad for some reason. I don't know why, just because, you know, I'm I'm addicted to this dream of mine. But uh, we both just broke down and started crying together. It was it was incredible. What a magical moment, especially with Christmas. It's hard to put into words like I, I was incredibly stoked that me, I was going to be a dad. I never saw myself as a dad before. I, I I admit I've been selfish about my time in the past, but you know, this, this is really shaping me to get my priorities in track. So when we found out, basically our agreement was, yo, let's do this. We're both stoked, but we're ready for whatever happens. And as we approach our first ultrasound, I think maybe it's 12 weeks, I believe. So like 12 weeks, we get that first ultrasound and they like freak us out immediately. They're basically convinced that he has some type of problem. Um, There's like extra fluid in his neck. And uh, we had to go to Iowa City where like the big time hospital and the clinic and everything is to get pretty much uh, an ultrasound on steroids. And they also had concerns because Emily's had thyroid issues in the past and her thyroid was acting up. So, you know, right off the back, we just had some adversity that we're facing. We're getting punched in the mouth and we, we had to wait like a week and a half to finally get scheduled to Iowa city. And this would have been in February, 2018. And during that day we were driving, we were getting hit with a massive snowstorm, like everything, a a blizzard to be exact, like 12 inches plus. And we had about a stretch of maybe an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half in front of us to go. But we knew it was going to be super snowy that day. So we left super, super early for our 2.30 appointment. I think we left at like 10.30 just to play it safe to try and beat the rush. And we ended up getting hit with the blizzard. We drove through this insane blizzard, bumper to bumper. I saw between the trip there, it was supposed to be an hour and a half. It took us well over three hours. I saw probably easily 15 different semis go into the ditch, jackknife. I saw cars hitting cars. Uh, We saw a pileup. It was crazy. And back on the news later that day, when we look back on it, 
Um, the, the highway ended up getting shut down. There was tow bans. There was a massive car pile up with uh, a, a good portion of deaths. So somehow we made it through it. It was the most stressful drive in the world. And by the time we got to the hospital and parked, like my fingers were gripped around the steering wheel and they had to pry them off. And on the way down, we also realized there's no way in hell we're going to be able to drive back. So we had to call and get a hotel on the way, just a little cheap one close to the uh, hospital. So we get to the hospital and we're just waiting in the the, um, waiting room forever. And we're both just nervous wrecks. And I have anxiety anyway. I tell you all the time I deal with anxiety. And so, you know, creating problems that don't exist. So in my mind, I'm like, what's going to happen? Finally, they, uh, they call us, they're ready. And before we go and get the ultrasound, they basically sit us down and go through this whole slew of things that could be wrong with them and how, if it's this, this, and this, we might want to terminate the pregnancy or you'll be giving birth to a stillborn. And it was, it was insanely scary. And I could only imagine how my wife felt at the time, but we got the ultrasound and, you know, whatever happened, we would respond. Okay. We'd roll with the punches and think, thankfully, I, I don't know if it's the law of attraction, but this whole time I'm telling my wife, he's going to be fine. Just say it out loud. Believe it every day. Wake up saying that he's going to be fine. Go to bed each night. Just visualize it. This little dude is going to be fine. He's a fighter. You know, he's like us. He's got some grit tenacity in his blood and he, he was, he was okay. It ended up just being, you know, a fluke of what they saw. They checked on him again in a couple weeks and he was fine. But that was like the first wave of adversity we had to deal with. And it was terrifying as first time parents, rather regardless for any parents. And I consider us really, really lucky because I know uh, I have some close friends who haven't been so lucky. So we're extremely blessed and grateful. Well, the next wave of things is Emily didn't get maternity leave. Like right now she's on maternity leave. I just finished up my three weeks. And money's been tight for us. Like I don't, I'm not a baller. You know, I, I hold down a day job. I got bills to pay. I got, um, student loans up the ass. You know, I was, I was dumb private school, but we, we don't live this lavish lifestyle. You know, I got a 2011 Ford fusion. It's the nicest car I've ever had. And to me, it's like a Mercedes Benz. So in order to get her the 12 weeks that she deserved and for me to get any type of time off, like I had to just grind it out and bust my ass. I always tell her like, we're tight on funds. I'll make it work. Somehow everything's going to work. We still have enough for groceries, gas, whatever it is. But in my mind, I'm always telling her, you know, roll with the punches. All right. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to make this work. So she had to burn through, um, all of her banked time off, paid time off that she went through. And then I had to find a way to cover the rest of hers. And I was trying to get two weeks for myself. So I just busted my ass and it felt like opportunity after opportunity kept landing in my lap when I needed it the most, especially after a project, a huge project that would have covered everything all fell through because this building of uh, this, this restaurant needed to get renovation. So they couldn't do this huge mur- mural that, you know, I, I was about to get that would have covered everything. I thought this was the best opportunity. And, you know, it fell through and I could have sulked, you know, that was another punch. That was a punch to my gut. It, it was like, I felt so defeated for a little bit. But Emily reminded me, yo, we're rolling with the punches. We always make it work. You always, you always pull through and make something happen. And over the summer, project after project just kept popping up for me. And maybe it was 500 at this one, or maybe it was a thousand here. Maybe this one was like two grand or this one was 800 or maybe this one was another 300 to 500 smaller ones, things that I would normally say no to because I, I want the hell yes opportunities. I took on everything and slowly built up to that amount and then work blessed me with a good opportunity as well with a bonus for performance and we we got to our goal money plus some and it allowed me to take three weeks off but if I would have just felt defeated and both of us just wallowed in self-pity we we wouldn't have been able to get her what she deserved nor me and shout out to the ladies because motherhood the whole carrying a baby birthing a baby, nursing. It is so much work. I have so much respect for you women. You have no idea. And my wife, I'm right here. My wife is a badass. She did it all natural. We took Bradley classes. Don't get me wrong. It was hard as hell for her. And at the end she was asking for the meds, but it was too late. And so she pushed that little dude out into this world and she hasn't even had a Tylenol yet to this day. So shout out to my wife. What a badass, but 
all of this. And here's the next wave is that she was a, a pastor due date. So we were easily uh, over a week now and we had to set an induced date, but it's like, whatever happens, happens. We're rolling with the punches. Um, if the pregnancy and our birth plan doesn't go as, as expected, rolling with the punches. And, and we were scared too, because we were getting all these horror stories from the girls that were in our Bradley classes of labor going over 24 hours or, you know, they stalled out and they needed the Pitocin or the epidural. And we were, we were ready for whatever we, we knew that our, uh, uh, darkness and tornado could come through and totally, you know, ruin her expectations. But, you know, we were able to respond to adversity if it happened. And luckily, you know, things worked out in her favor and she's so happy for that. But again, she was past her due date. We got to, we ended up avoiding her being induced, you know, any type of medical prevention we could get away from. That's what we wanted. So overall, everything was good. No drugs, no Tylenol. She's a badass. And now we're back at home and a whole new wave of adversity of, you know, Scotty being fussy. It's being a parent, I'm learning that you got to continue to roll with the punches. If something shows up with my health or her health or, you know, I recently just had a health scare too. I don't want to talk about, but um, it ended up being something that could be treated. And, you know, I'm, I was rolling with the punches. I, I'd go with whatever happened. I haven't talked about it. It was really stressful. It's about three weeks ago now that this comes out. But, you know, whatever happens, I'm going to fucking face it and I'm going to deal with it. So... This has been like a year's worth. I know this may not be put together perfectly. This is more me just stream of thought and talking about it, but that's life, all right? It's not sunshine and rainbows. Whatever happens, happens. Things are going to happen. You got to expect the unexpected. And I want to transition that into your creative pursuits. You know, think about this as your creative career. If you're a person who's, you know, trying to elevate your your hobbies to a side project, to side hustles in order to do it full time one day. You know, you got some skin in the game and you got to expect the unexpected. Like goals are everything. Having goals, having plans, having milestones, having your eyes on a target that you're working toward each day. That shit is so important. But being able to be flexible and pivot. And if some shit goes down in life, you got to be able to respond and right now with me pursuing the podcast, if something happens with little Scotty, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to have to understand that I may need to take a week off. I may need to push the episode back a day. I may need two weeks off if something pops up. You know, I, I, I'm i prepared to, even though it feels like I'm letting myself down and letting you down, I'm prepared that there's, there's a bigger picture at hand and I got to act in the moment. So things that... I've dealt with recently that don't go as expected, but I had to respond to this adversity is a client may pull the rug out from under you on a project. They might just terminate it, say, yo, we can't do this. That was money that you had accounted for in your upcoming bills and stuff. You know, it may, may not be there. What are you going to do about it? Okay. Are you going to respond? Uh, another thing is a client may fail to pay an invoice on time. I live in the corporate world for the day job and like, they're missing paying invoices all the time or they like you won't get paid for 60 to 90 days i'm like what the hell is this shit like i would hate to be one of our vendors or you get things like your your computer crashes i've had my hard drive crash before on me the motherboard failed or something like you break your phone and you know you do a lot of your business on the phone like i do or there's things like you can have some type of uncontrollable damage to say your office or whatever co-working space you're at you know how are you going to respond a lot of these things you can't prepare for, but what are you going to do about it? Are you going to bitch, whine, and complain, or are you going to roll with the punches knowing that you can respond to this adversity? And here's some other ways of mental adversity that you probably deal with. Maybe you don't want to admit it, but I deal with it, and I'm going to talk about it. So maybe you're falling in a depressed funk. All right, I, I talk about that in episode 25, that creative funk and this hole I've been trying to pull myself out of. Or maybe you hit some type of creative block. You know, you just can't create. You're stumped on a blog post or what to create to post on Instagram for your weekly content or, you know, whatever it is, a photography. Or maybe you deal with the hater that makes you question your existence and doubt your creative abilities. I'm going to talk a lot more about this next week as I dealt with some recent hate. I'll talk about it next week. doesn't matter right now. But 
all I want you to know when I'm trying to wrap this up with you right now is that you are not alone. Have a plan, but expect the unexpected because no matter what happens, you always have that ability to respond to adversity when life wants to shoot you an uppercut and knock you to the ground. I've dealt with waves of adversity. That's why I want to be just an open book for you to see like, you know, I, I'm slowly working my way to have some successes, but in order to get to those sunny days where things are going great and I'm in the zone and I'm getting the validation or praise or good clients, it's because I had to go through piles of shit on my way to get here. I had to go with these days, like us not knowing if Scotty is going to have some type of health defect, deformity, or if we're going to have to put our son or terminate the birthing process. Like that was crazy this last year, or this recent health scare that I thought I had. You know, this shit's going to happen. And you have to be equipped with this mindset to deal with it. And that's what I want to encourage you to see life through a different lens each day, just realizing like shit could be way worse. There's so many people out there in the world that would love to switch your positions they would give anything they had to have running water to have shoes on their feet to have a fresh set of pencils hb with printer paper and we're over here balling with our ipads so don't lose perspective on how good you have it and when shit hits the fan roll with the punches dust yourself off and get back up to the plate and keep swinging all right Okay, we did it. I hope you like this one. This one is the most different one I've done so far. This is the most unscripted I've been because majority of it was just storytelling. So I would love to know what you thought about this. If you like this style and this format and a little bit more, you know, off the hip. And I would love to hear maybe sometime recently or in the past that you dealt with some adversity, you know, you had to roll with the punches. How did you dust yourself off and bounce back? It, it, let me know on today's Instagram post, whether it's on the perspective podcast page or the perspective underscore collective killer vowels. I, I would love to hear about that. I want to hear your stories. I want to hear your feedback on, you know, how this show affected you and what's some of the adversity that you've had to, you know, brush yourself off with and bounce back to recently. Moving on to this week's dose of inspiration. This one goes to Cassie Turpin. That's K Turp on Instagram. K A Y T U R P. This girl is not afraid to experiment with her lettering styles and color palettes. She does an amazing job of including illustrations into her work, and I really enjoy the border elements she implements. To me, it gives it just another level of being commercialized. You know, people could hire her for this for sure. I highly encourage you to check her out again at K Turp. That's K A Y T U R P on the Grizzams. If you're enjoying what you hear and you want to support the growth of the show, would you consider giving it a rating and review over on iTunes or Apple Podcasts? Is what it's called now. You know, get up to speed. It makes a big difference in getting the show discovered and climbing up those creative ranks. I would love to give you a public shout out and send some love back your way, like this week's rating and review from. Andrew Lay from the UK. I love that that rhymes. And Andrew titles this one, Creative Advice for Us All. Andrew states, this is a great podcast for any creative looking to carve out their own path and create the work that matters to them. Each episode explores the struggles, efforts, risks, and rewards of pursuing creative career from personal experience, either that of Scotty or his guests each week. This is a stark contrast to the slew of other podcasts where the host is attempting to hawk all the manner of premium courses, communities, and contents to help you achieve their success. It's inspiring to hear about the successes the creatives on the show experience and heartening to know they still suffer from the same doubts and struggles us mortals do. Give it a listen. Andrew, dude, I sincerely appreciate you and all the support you've been sending my way and your activity and the, the Perspective Collective Facebook group and just through our DMs on Instagram. You have no idea how much it means to me. Thank you so much. And as I wrap things up, I need to give a huge thank you to my podcast editor, Anya Brennan, all the way from Ireland, and my show notes editor, Paige Garland. I could not do this without you two. You two rock. And a huge thanks to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on the show. Check them out at SoundCloud or on Instagram at Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as always, I want to encourage you to finish out your week strong. Keep showing up keep putting in the work 
and keep creating. You got this.